you know, we've only got a certain number of messy objects left. And we had a messy object left in every single, like, zeros, tens, twenties, thirties. We only had one twenties messy object left. So this is the last of the twenties, which I think is a, is a milestone. All right, Doc, what you got? All right, I've got uh, M23 this week. So this is what M23 looks like. It's an open cluster, NGC 6494. Unlike a globular cluster, they're a lot less dense. They don't really have that sort of spherical shape like globular clusters do either. So this is actually only about 150 stars that are gravitationally bound together in this cluster. So open clusters form all from the same molecular gas cloud, basically. So you have this gas cloud that starts to clump together and form stars, but because it wasn't as dense as the, the gas clouds that form globular clusters, you don't get that same beautiful sort of like dense spherical structure that you get with the globular clusters, which is why when we look at a picture, it just looks like stars. What dictates whether you become a globular or an open? Yeah, basically what the gas was doing before you formed the cluster. So how much gas was there, how dense it is, is going to determine how many stars you form and where those stars are uh, and how sort of gravitationally bound those stars are as well. So this one has got 150 stars, but compare that to a globular cluster where you have like thousands of stars, right? So it's quite sparse. This is the kind of area of sky that it's in. So here's M23. Again, can't really see it because it's just stars. Uh, it's also near M21, which is another open cluster. And then the Triffid Nebula, which I think Mike covered, and then the Lagoon Nebula that Megan's already covered as well. So it's in a really cool area of sky. It's in the constellation of Sagittarius, which is basically if you look towards the center of the Milky Way, that's basically Sagittarius. And so it's really busy kind of area of sky, but the actual open cluster itself is kind of boring looking. It's about 2000 light years away and it's about 20 light years across. So again, it's not that far, it's not that close. I kind of want to dub it like the Goldilocks open cluster, like it's a little bit basic, like, <laughs> you know, there's not really much going for it. Well, it must have something. No, one thing I did get excited about when I saw it is actually, it's about 300 million years old, which sounds old, but actually it's only the 22nd oldest open cluster. There's actually seven more Messier open clusters that are older than it. <laughs> so it's not the oldest, but that seems to be its most defining feature. So that's what I started uh, thinking about was actually, can open clusters die? You know, the same way that stars eventually run out of fuel and die, can these objects that are made from stars also die? Or like, what is their eventual fate? So as you form the clusters, you have all of the stars, you have the high mass, the, the big stars, they die off first. And then you obviously get left with less and less stars. That obviously makes it look slightly boring like we see in this one, but it also means that they're less gravitationally bound. So you start off with a very gravitationally stable system where you have all of these stars clumped together. And then as you lose more and more, the energy in that system decreases. So as you have less and less energy binding these stars together, uh, it means that the escape velocity from that system gets less and less as well. So the escape velocity being the velocity you need to escape its gravitational influence. And the thing is that the stars in these systems, they have their own random velocity as well, just a little random motion in the cluster. You know, they're not sort of all just solidly moving together in, in one, you know, ball arrangement. They are moving through the galaxy together, but all with their own little random motion. And the thing is, as that energy decreases in the cluster, you can have the stars that end up just escaping because their random velocity is greater than the eventual escape velocity that you end up with. And so basically one way for an open cluster to die is to basically it just to disperse, where the stars sort of just all go their separate ways once there's too few of them to keep it together anymore. Presumably another way they can die is that all the stars burn out and they just become invisible. Yeah, so that would be another way would that they would all just die off. Um, of course, you've got to wait a really long time for that and probably um, your sort of random dispersion is probably going to happen first before that happens because these small stars are very long. They, they can just kind of keep chugging along with the fuel that they have, so... Um, at least in our lifetime, we're never going to see that happen. Um, the other way, though, that's probably more likely as well than you know, just waiting around for uh, the stars to all die off um, is if you think about this cluster is sort of moving within the galaxy. It's going around the center of the galaxy as one entity together. But as it does that, you know, it's going to bypass a lot of other objects, a lot of other maybe gas clouds, these huge giant gas clouds that could form globular clusters or open clusters that are going to have huge masses. And so if you have an interaction with something like that, like another object, either a close pass or it fully goes through a gas cloud, you're really going to disturb that open cluster system that 
isn't that well gravitationally bound. And so what you end up doing is you form what's called a stream. And so you can sort of drag out the stars instead of being a cluster anymore. They're going around the, the center of the galaxy, again, all together, just in a huge big stream that's been sort of dragged out by this interaction with this other object. It's a bit difficult to see the open clusters because obviously this is 150 stars. So, you know, if that streamed out, like you say, you probably wouldn't notice a change in, you know, this background image at all, right, of, of the stars itself. We do see this happen, though, on a bigger scale. So around the Milky Way, the same thing happens with globular clusters and dwarf galaxies. So they get torn apart by gravitational interactions and you get these really cool streams around the Milky Way that people have detected. You know, there's one associated with the Magellanic Clouds. There's something called the Sagittarius Dwarf Stream as well. And they look really cool. There is one, though, that I found that people think that the Hyades Cluster, that this has happened to that cluster, though, that it's been streamed. So the Hyades Cluster is actually one of the nearest open clusters to the Sun. It's about twice as old as M23. It's about 600 million years old. And actually, in studying this, they found that there could be a chance that about 15% of the stars in the Hyades stream, they would be associated with the Hyades cluster as well. And so this is one of these open clusters that we think might be actually going through this process of dying and streaming out. And so that might give us sort of an eventual sort of clue for the fate of M23. It is a bit of a boring one. I can see why it was the last one in the 20s. Yeah, I feel like people avoided it for a while. <laughs> there was some interesting research in sort of the 90s about whether it had a high metallicity. It just turned out not. And so it ends up with this sort of generic, run-of-the-mill, basic properties, not that exciting open cluster. But it made it into the list, so we have to do it. <laughs> Hi there, thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more videos with Becky, both here on Deep Sky Videos, or our physics channel 60 Symbols, have a look at the playlist I'm linking here on the screen or in the video description. You can also look at a playlist of all the messier objects we've covered so far as we work our way towards making all 110 videos. <gasps> Are you, like, that's the happiest I've ever been. <laughs>